Chapter 10 of Among the Pond People. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Rebecca Braunert Plunkett. Among the Pond People by Clara Dillingham Pearson the snappy snapping turtle there was but one snapping turtle in the pond and he was the only person there who had ever been heard to wish for another he had not always lived there and could just remember leaving his brothers and sisters when he was young i was carried away from my people he said and kept on land for a few days then i was brought here and have made it my home ever since. One could tell by looking at him that he was related to the mud turtles. He had upper and lower shells like them, and could draw in his head and legs and tail when he wanted to. His shells were gray, quite the color of a clay bank, and his head was larger than those of the mud turtles. His tail was long and scaly and pointed, and his forelegs were large and warty. There were fine, strong webs between his toes, as they were between the toes of his relatives, the mud turtles. When he first came to live in the pond, people were sorry for him and tried to make him feel at home. He had a chance to win many friends and have all his neighbors fond of him, but he was too snappy. When the water was just warm enough, and his stomach was full, and he had slept well the night before, and everything was exactly as he wished it to be, ah, then he was a very agreeable turtle, and was ready to talk in the most gracious way to his neighbors. That was all very well. Anybody can be good-natured when everything is exactly right, and he can have his own way. But the really delightful people, you know, are the ones who are pleasant when things go wrong. It was a mud turtle father who first spoke to him. I hope you'll like the pond, said he. We think it very homelike and comfortable. Mph! Shallow little hole, snapped the one who had just come. I bump my head on the bottom every time I dive. That is too bad, exclaimed the mud turtle father. I hope you dive where there's a soft bottom. Sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't, answered the snapping turtle. I can't bother to swim down slowly and try it and then go back to dive. When I want to dive, I want to dive, and that's all there is to it. Yes, said the mud turtle father. I know how it is when one has the diving feeling. I hope your head will not trouble you much, and that you will soon be used to our waters. He spread his toes and swam strongly away, pushing against the water with his webbed feet. Umph, said the snapping turtle to himself. It's all very well to talk about getting used to these waters, but I never shall. I can hardly see now for the pain on the right side of my head where I bumped it. Or was it the left side I hit? Queer, I can't remember. Then he swam to shallow water and drew himself into his shell and lay there and thought how badly he felt and how horrid the pond was and what poor company his neighbors were and what a disagreeable world this is for a snapping turtle. The mud turtle father went home and told his wife all about it. What a disagreeable fellow, she said. But then, he is a bachelor and bachelors are often queer. I never was, said her husband. Oh, said she, and being a wise wife, she did not say anything else. She knew, however, that Mr. Mud Turtle was a much more agreeable fellow since he had married and learned to think more of somebody else than of himself. It is the people who think too much of themselves, you know, who are most unhappy in this world. The eels also tried to be friendly, and when he dove to the bottom, called to him to stay and visit with them. You must excuse us from making the first call, they said, 
we go out so little in the daytime Umph, said the snapping turtle do you good to get away from home more no wonder your eyes are weak when you lie around in the mud of the dark pond bottom all day indeed i'll not stay you can come to see me like other people then he swam away and told the clams what he had said and he acted quite proud of uh, what was really dreadful rudeness it'll do them good to hear the truth said he i always speak right out they are as bad as the water adder they have no backbone the clams listened politely and said nothing they never did talk much the snapping turtle was mistaken though when he said that the eels and the water adder had no backbone they really had much more than he but they wore theirs inside while his was spread out in the shape of a shell for everybody to see he did not even try to keep his temper he became angry one day because belostoma the giant water bug ate something which he wanted for himself his eyes glared and his horny jaw snapped and he waved his long pointed scaly tail in a way which was terrible to see you are a good-for-nothing bug he said you do no work and you eat more than any other person of your size here nobody likes you and there isn't a little fish in the pond who would be seen with you if he could help it they all hide if they see you coming i'll be heartily glad when you get your wings and fly away don't let any of your friends lay their eggs in this pond i've seen enough of your family of course this made belostoma feel very badly he was not a popular bug and it is possible that if he could have had his own way he would have chosen to be a crayfish or a stickleback rather than what he was as for his not working there was nothing for him to do so how could he work he had to eat or he would not grow and since the snapping turtle was a hearty eater himself he should have had the sense to keep still about that belostoma told the mud turtles what the snapping turtle had said and the mud turtle father spoke of it to the snapping turtle by that time the snapping turtle was feeling better natured and was very gracious belostoma shouldn't remember those things said he moving one warty foreleg when i'm angry i often say things that i do not mean but then i get right over it i had almost forgotten my little talk with him i don't see any reason for telling him i am sorry he's very silly to think so much of it he lifted his big head quite high and acted as though it was really a noble thing to be ugly and then forget about it he might just as sensibly ask people to admire him for not eating when his stomach was full or for lying still when he was too tired to swim when the mud turtle mother heard of this she was quite out of patience all he cares for said she is just snapping turtle snapping turtle snapping turtle when he's good-natured he thinks everybody else ought to be and when he's bad-tempered he doesn't care how other people feel he will never be any more agreeable until he does something kind for somebody and i don't see any chance of that happening there came a day though when the pond people were glad that the snapping turtle lived there two boys were wading in the edge of the pond splashing the water and scaring all the people who were near them the sticklebacks turned pale all over as they do when they are badly frightened the yellow brown frog was so scared that he emptied out the water he had saved for wetting his skin in dry weather he had a great pocket in his body filled with water for if his skin should get dry he couldn't breathe through it and unless he carried water with him he could not stay ashore at all the boys had even turned the mad turtle father onto his back in the sunshine where he lay waving his feet in the air but not strong enough to get right side up again the snapping turtle was taking a nap in deep water when the frightened fishes came swimming toward him as fast as their tails would take them what is the matter said he boys cried they 
boys the dreadful splashing turtle turning kind umph said the snapping turtle i'll have to see about that how many are there two cried the sticklebacks and minnows together and there is only one of me said the snapping turtle to himself i must have somebody to help me oh belostoma he cried as the giant water bug swam past help me drive those boys away with pleasure said belostoma who liked nothing better than this kind of work off they started for the place where the boys were waiting the snapping turtle took long strong strokes with his webbed feet and belostoma could not keep up with him the snapping turtle saw this jump onto my back cried he you are a light fellow hang tight belostoma jumped onto the snapping turtle's clay-coloured shell and when he found himself slipping off the back end of it he stuck his claws into the snapping turtle's tail and held on in that way he knew that he was not easily hurt even if he did make a fuss when he bumped his head as soon as they got near the boys the snapping turtle spoke over his back shell to belostoma slide off now said he and drive away the smaller boy don't stop to talk with these bloodsuckers so belostoma slid off and swam toward the smaller boy and he ran out his stout little sucking tube and stung him on the leg just then the snapping turtle brought his horny jaws together on one of the larger boy's feet there was a great splashing and dashing as the boys ran to the shore and three bloodsuckers who had fastened themselves to the boy's legs did not have time to drop off and were carried ashore and never seen again there said the snapping turtle that's done i don't know what the pond people would do if you and i were not here to look after them belostoma i'm glad i happened along said the giant waterbuck quietly but you will have to do it all after this i'm about ready to leave the pond i think i'll go tomorrow going tomorrow exclaimed the snapping turtle i'm sorry of course i know you can never come back but send your friends here to lay their eggs we mustn't be left without some of your family thank you said belostoma and he did not show that he remembered some quite different things which the snapping turtle had said before about his leaving the pond and that showed that he was a very wise bug as well as a brave one Umph, said the snapping turtle there is the mud turtle father on his back and he ran to him and pushed him over onto his feet oh thank you cried the mud turtle mother i was not strong enough to do that always glad to help my neighbors said the snapping turtle pleasant day isn't it i must tell the fishes that the boys are gone the poor little fellows were almost too scared to swim and he went away with a really happy look on his face there said the mud turtle mother to her husband he has begun to help people and now he likes them and is contented i always told you so End of chapter ten